Hi. I'm looking at how the process of writing and communicating about ideas can help us think through those ideas better in the first place. In the last video, I looked at how I could improve a corporate style of presentation by trying not to use nouns and noun phrases as the slide headers, by using whole sentences to help me think through the ideas better, to look at the relationships between them and make sure I had a solid, well thought through argument. And those slides had a fair bit of text, not only in the headers, but bullets and diagrams and this kind of thing. I got a couple of comments about the last video saying that I should really try to use the more minimal kind of keynote style of presentation, which is quite popular these days. And I mean, I've used that style a fair bit and it's very good for some things. I wouldn't say that it's the only good style, uh, but it can certainly work well. But I felt those commenters were slightly missing the point that I was looking at the quality of the ideas in the first place and not the specific format. Nevertheless, I wanted to look at the kind of assumption that seems to be around at the moment that using that minimal kind of uh, keynote style presentation um, can itself improve the quality of our ideas. Um, in a way, because it reduces things to just minimal text, there seems to be nowhere for bad ideas to hide. They're very, very clear there. Um, could this help me to develop a good argument? So I wanted to put together a simple example slide deck to test out this idea uh, that the minimalist style, the keynote style of presentation can help your message in itself. So this style of presentation became popular in the early 2010s, I would say. Uh, with presentations like Steve Jobs' launch of the first iPhone, many TED Talks, and so on. And I imagined that I was giving a keynote presentation, and it's about design, particularly about simplicity in design, the idea of simplicity in design. And I was inspired by the user experience researcher and writer Don Norman, who has some very kind of counterintuitive ideas about this. And that's very suitable for a keynote presentation because you want to kind of grab people's attention. You want to make them think in a new way. So this seemed to work quite well. So, and normally, I mean, I've done presentations in this style before a fair bit, but uh, I normally plan quite a lot. I plan on paper, I plan in various different tools before I ever get to the slide software itself, whether that be PowerPoint or Apple Keynote or whatever. And this time, because I wanted to test out specifically, does creating slides in this format help me think about the message? Um, I started working directly in, well, Apple Keynote. So to put together this simulated slide deck, or at least the, the portion I was simulating, I relied on my memory of a couple of blog posts by Don Norman on simplicity in design. And I looked for a lot of graphics that would back up my message and I played with some words that I thought would get it across okay. And all of this was in the presentation software, so it was in Apple Keynote that I was doing this. And I came up with something that I thought looked pretty good at first. Um, so I started with this section title of simplicity and over the section title, if I was actually presenting this, I would talk about how we often think that simple in design is a good thing. So I might use the example of the early kind of Apple products, the first version of the iPhone, the iPod before that, the iPad after it, and say that although they had fewer features um, than their kind of direct competitors in the field, so, you know, other smartphones at the time, the iPhone, other tablets and, and so on, although they had fewer features, the overall experience was one of kind of coherence, of smoothness, of simplicity perhaps, and that this was generally seen as a good thing. Also perhaps the Google search box, you know, the single search box in the middle of the, the big white page seen as a good thing generally in design. And I would go on to challenge that, of course, drawing on Don Norman, I would say simple is wrong to really get people's attention. And I would use this example, the kind of classic simple clock design that inspired other designs uh, to make this point. And then I'd have to justify it, of course. Why am I saying that simple is wrong? How can I back that up? And I would start to get at this kind of point of Don Norman's that I remembered by saying that life is complex. And I would use this uh, complex image of uh, an apartment complex itself, um, apartment buildings, and just say, you know, life is complex and start saying, well, should our designs be simple in that way? Should, shouldn't they kind of reflect life? And I would go on to a third slide 
which just kind of rounds it off and says, complex tools are natural. And bringing in an example from Don Norman here of the aeroplane cockpit, where it looks very complicated. Certainly to me, I, I'm not a pilot. I don't really know a lot about flying planes and this looks really complicated, but I'm pretty sure that to these pilots trained on that particular model of plane, it can feel like a fairly simple experience. And the reason for that is, as Don Norman says, uh, each major kind of function, each major control is dedicated to one kind of area of this control panel. So they've each got their own space and our brains kind of deal quite well with that um, in terms of distributing things spatially. So to these pilots, it would actually be quite a simple experience. Um, and yet it is a complex tool to match a complex job. And that reflects part of Don, what Don Norman was saying. So the, those are the slides that I came up with. So initially I was quite happy with these slides, the way they kind of grabs attention, the visuals and so on. But I left them for a couple of weeks and then I came back and I wasn't so happy anymore. I had some questions like, what about those simple designs that seem to have been so successful? You know, the Google search box, the early Apple products and so on. How do they fit in this picture um, where things should be complex because life is complex? And it was kind of a, a fatalistic message that I'd come up with almost to say, well, what can you do about it? You know, life's complex, deal with it. You know, just make, make your tools complex like that. And there's nothing you could really take away from that and, and um, really act on, nothing very practical. Actually, some of the best presentations that I've seen, the most memorable ones, um, of all different formats, really, all different pre presentation styles and to be honest, all different skills of the presenters. But of all of these, the ones that have kind of stuck in my mind the most have been the ones that taught me to do something that left me feeling that I'd been empowered with a kind of a tool to deal with, um, to deal with my work or uh, other aspects of life in a different way. And that wasn't happening here. You know, I've left people with this kind of somewhat negative picture. Life is complex. Make your designs complex too. And that, and that's it. So it might kind of in the short term kind of um, excite you a bit to say, well, you know, design shouldn't be simple after all, uh, but really leaves you with a hollow feeling. And I'm not saying that, you know, I've seen many great presentations in this style, but it, I would say that using this format certainly didn't help me think through my points very well because I came up with this somewhat empty presentation. And it seems that others also felt that this kind of minimal TED talk or keynote style of presentation could be a bit empty. Comedian Will Stevens parodied, parodied it really well at a TEDx event in 2014. Um, and I've linked it in the description, but I've got a few screenshots here um, of the bit where he's really parodying the big empty words that you have in some of these presentations. And it reflects, of course, the last video I did where, where I was talking about these kind of nouns and noun phrases which hide a lot of things. They try to encapsulate a lot of meaning and somehow avoid thinking through points very thoroughly. And it seems that that's perhaps a danger of this keynote style of presentation, uh, that you do end up thinking in a fuzzy way. And again, I'm not saying that uh, all of these presentations by any means are like this. I've seen some great ones, but it's a danger that if we just focus on this format, uh, we can end up with something that feels quite polished, feels quite real, and feels as if our ideas are kind of inspiring and, and real but when you look into them, they're perhaps less solid, less reliable than you thought. There's less of a focused argument than you thought. But I decided to, to try and do this better because I knew the keynote style could work. I've seen it work. How could I do the same kind of story, um, but thinking through the message a bit better? I proved to myself, at least, that just doing it straight in the slides wouldn't work. So I did what I always do. I started doing my planning on paper instead, um, and then in various kind of note-taking tools. Uh, and I brainstormed a lot. I came up with various different kind of flows of this thing. Um, and I'll show you a little bit of how that, how I thought through this. I won't show you my handwriting because that would be hard to read, um, but I'll show you a kind of representation of the process that I went through when I was thinking about this. And as I was going through and thinking, I was also rereading Don Norman's work on this. So originally I'd been inspired by a couple of blog posts on, of his on the subject of simplicity. 
But then I read through his whole book on living with complexity and got a much more kind of nuanced view even than I'd got from the blog post before. And that really helped me prepare this. So here's the process I went through. I started by just writing down the ideas that I wanted to convey, not in any particular presentational style, uh, but just as a couple of sentences. And sentences are good for thinking, as we've seen before. So the two basic concepts, simple designs aren't always best and complex tools can work better, which is really the essence, I think, of uh, what I was trying to um, echo of, of Don Norman's thought. So simple designs aren't always best. How can we kind of phrase that in a way that works on a slide? I had started, if you remember before, by the, the attention grabbing message, simple is wrong. But it's a little bit too simplistic, I would say. Can, can we get a bit more nuanced about why simple is wrong or, or what this really means? Can we try and unpack that at all? So here we go. Simplicity is deceptive. This is a little bit better, I think. It's not that it's wrong per se, because um, you can have a simple experience. I mean, Don Norman is all for what, what feels like a simple experience. It's just that to outsiders, to people not using that tool, it might appear complex. So in that sense, it's deceptive. Simplicity is deceptive. Maybe this improves. Now, um, is deceptive this kind of passive construction in English using the be verb? It's a little bit passive. So let's just make it a little bit more active and dynamic. Simplicity deceives. Now, simplicity is the agent of this deception. Um, just got a little bit more energy to this phrase. But I still felt it's kind of a bit abstract. Is there any way we can make it a bit more concrete? So here, simplicity is a mental state. This is a bit more specific. Um, it's saying, why is it kind of deceptive? Why is it subjective? It's because it's a mental state. And this is actually a, a quote um, from a passage in Don Norman's book, Living with Complexity. And so the whole quote is like this. So it's a really nuanced view there. And this simplicity is a mental state is just the very first phrase from here. Um, and it kind of misses out a lot more context. So on its own as a phrase, I'm not sure it helps that much because everything is in ultimately in some sense a mental state. So can we do any better still in these keynote slides that I'm preparing? Simple tools complicate tasks. Now we're going back a little bit to the state where we're, we're making these kind of blanket provocative statements. Now, as we know, not, not every simple tool complicates tasks, but I kind of like this still. It's, it's doing something, it's making us think. Um, and I think in this kind of um, format, in this kind of forum of a keynote presentation, you're allowed to be a bit provocative. You're allowed to exaggerate a little bit. So I quite like this. Simple tools complicate tasks. Um, so we'll leave that there. So to the next bit, complex tools can work better. And if you remember, I had the two slides. I had one that says life is complex and the other one that said complex tools are natural. Um, and I felt this was a little bit kind of deterministic or fatalistic. So how can we improve on this and give it more context? I think this expresses Don Norman's ideas a lot better. Fit complexity to the job, which is really what he's about. Um, if you have actually a very simple job, then a simple tool probably does it. I mean, a perceived simple tool, one that one that looks simple to outsiders is probably great. Um, it's when you have a complex job that you need a tool that is more complex in order to get that simple experience. So I like this, fit complexity to the job. But if you remember that quote from Don Norman, it's all about the mental model that you build. And I wanted to get something in there about this to kind of connect these two phrases. So the simple tools complicate tasks, fit complexity to the job, something in the middle about how it's all about your mental model that you construct that, that makes this experience of simplicity or not. So I wrote down another sentence just for myself, mental models make or break this experience of simplicity. And this is what I wanted to get across, but I didn't want to use exactly that sentence. It was too wordy. This was just my kind of um, thinking, through, um, thinking through this point. So how could I write it down? Simple experiences match mental models. Interesting. Um, it's kind of getting there, but the audience might wonder whose mental models we're actually talking about. Can we improve on this? Can we make it more concrete and specific and useful? Um, a simple experience match, matches your mental model. 
So I like this. It's, it's quite specific, brings it right back down to earth. So I'm happy with these words, not only as words on slides, um, they may not be the perfect ones, but I'm happy that they kind of convey uh, with a lot more nuance and subtlety uh, Don Norman's actual message without being boring. Still kind of attention grabbing and interesting, I think, but with a message that's something that you can actually act on as somebody in the audience. So with my story thoroughly thought through, with the messages for the slides uh, really ironed out, I wanted to make these slides and see if I could do it better again, perhaps use better visuals even than I'd used before. And so that's what I started working on. So here, how to build a simple experience. Remember previously my section header was simplicity. Now it's how to build a simple experience. And if you remember, some of the presentations that have stuck with me the most have been the how-to ones that really taught me how to do something. And so I felt this was uh, more attention grabbing. It felt that you'd be getting some good value out of this. And I liked this image. What could be simpler than just the few buttons of an early digital watch? And yet anyone who's used one of these knows how frustrating it could be remembering the exact sequence. How many times do you press each button to get to like the alarm settings or something like this? So very simple um, in, it seems very simple when we look at it, but the experience is, is very complicated. So I think that was a good backup for this message of simple tools, complicate tasks. And then in contrast, so the iPhone uh, alarm setting experience where it is more complex. I mean, you've got not only the time that you're setting, you've got the actual sound and the label and there are other settings below this. Um, but because it matches your kind of mental model of the things around an alarm, and once you learn this, it becomes very quick and intuitive. Um, this was a really good illustration, I think, of a simple experience matching your own mental model. So that's what I used. It's a lot easier to map to our understanding of the world, I would say. And finally, the point on fitting complexity to the job. So Don Norman, apart from the example on the aeroplane control panel, he had another really nice example, which was a tool, a silversmith's uh, planishing hammer, I think it was called. Um, and in itself, it's a, it's a very, very simple tool. It's just a hammer. Um, but if you look at the silversmith's workshop, there are loads and loads and loads of highly specialized tools. So then it looks very complicated. But then, of course, because the silversmith is, is used to that work area and they've put everything where they know it will be and so on. Again, it's a simple experience for them. Um, each function has a dedicated tool. If they know where to find it, their own experience of that job becomes very simple. And this isn't, I don't think, a, a silversmith's workshop, but close enough, I thought. It's, it's somebody who's organized all the tools in a way that they can kind of recognize and find them. And it looks kind of complicated from our point of view. Um, but for that person, I think it's probably quite a simple experience to use all those tools. So I felt this version of the slides did a better job of communicating some of the nuance of Don Norman's ideas on design and simplicity, both with the text and the images that I subsequently chose. So as I saw, the keynote style, the minimal style of presentations in itself is not enough to ensure a good solid argument with well thought through ideas. It's a good way to present those sometimes, maybe not the only way, but it is a good way. But in itself, it doesn't guarantee a good argument. So a better way uh, to ensure good quality ideas in the first place is to get out of that presentational format, uh, to write down your ideas in sentence form, in uh, pencil and paper is great, or in a note-taking app or something like that. Write down a lot of sentences, play with things. Don't try for the final kind of wording at that point, just think through your ideas. Gradually then, when things are coming together, try to shape them into a logical sequence, a kind of story format, an outline. See how they're working together. They may not work that well. You may realize there are gaps in your argument at that point. That's a good sign, of course. And then go back and write some more sentences. Once you've done that a few times, you've got a good solid outline, polish up the words a bit more, and then you're ready finally to work on the visual format of the presentation, I would say, uh, not before then. So is this something you do already? Uh, do you do a different format of this? Do you have some particular ingredients uh, in your process for developing presentations that helps you? I'd love to hear about that in the comments. Please do let me know. Thank you.